The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. We are still mindful of the fact that we want to build a glorious church to possess the nations. This pandemic should not uh, take our minds off our goal at all. So I'll, I'll continue with living a victorious Christian life. I shall assume in this ministration that you heard me on Sunday. If for any reason you we're not around on Sunday, please. I will encourage you to get um, the CDs um, from Pen TV. See, the victorious Christian life begins from where Jesus left off. As his death, it begins from where Jesus left off. His death, we said, it purchased for us eternal redemption. We gave us eternal life. And we have inherited the promised Holy Spirit. This is enough for us to live a victorious Christian life. It is enough for us to reign in life as Christians. It is sufficient for a victorious life in Christ Jesus. His death on the cross gives us complete authority and power over sin, the world, and Satan. We are talking about authority and power over sin. The world and Satan. It's all part of the benefits of the cross. The new creation is really loaded with grace. The new creation is loaded with grace. But having said this, you see the difference of the effect of any two Christian lives it's not how long they have stayed in the church or how long they have been born again the difference of the effects of any two Christian lives. It's not how long they've been born again. Or how long they've been in the church. Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. It is like what Oswald Chambers said the other time. Oswald Chambers said the true character of a spiritual person is the ability to understand correctly the meaning of the Lord Jesus Christ in his or her life. The meaning to understand correctly 
the meaning of the Lord Jesus Christ in his or her life. That makes the difference. That makes the difference between one Christian and the other. Not how long they've been born again. Or they've lived in the church. But they are correct understanding of who Jesus is in their life. You see, the Christ in you is the hope of the manifestation of the glory of God on earth. But someone will need to teach him. Someone will have to pray the Christian to understand what it means to have Christ in his life. Today, the this end, the apostle Paul labored. He said he is the one who put. He is the one we proclaim. Admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom so that we may present everyone fully mature in Christ. To this end, I labor. He is working very hard that those who have been born again will understand what it means to be in Christ. He works very hard. This one is described in Acts chapter 26 as the opening of eyes. The opening of eyes. The opening of eyes. So we we'll know who we are in Christ. Or what it means for Christ to dwell in us. I pray that our eyes of understanding be enlightened. That we will know him. And understand him and be committed to him. You see, the apostle Paul was teaching in Acts chapter 17. For me, this is my definition of teaching. In Acts chapter 17, the apostle Paul still working very hard to get certain people to understand. And this is what the Bible says. See, Paul went to the Jews and he started by trying to persuade them. And this is what the scripture said. As his custom was, he entered the synagogue. Paul went into the synagogue. And on three Sabbath days, he reasoned with them from the scriptures, explaining, proving, explaining, proving, he reasoned with them, explaining, proving, he reasoned with them, explaining, proving that Jesus is the Messiah. This is what I will call teaching. Explaining. Reasoning. Proving. You see all this so that the believer will know what it means for Christ to indwell a man. So he was explaining. He was reasoning. Explaining. Reasoning. Trying to persuade them that people will know what it means to be a Christian. See, the eternal life we have received is a package. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 9. This is what the scripture says. Even though we speak like this, dear friends, we are convinced of better things Things in your case. Things that accompany salvation. 
Things that accompany salvation. Things that come with salvation. Things that belong to salvation. So when you have eternal life. And you are saved. Certain things accompany salvation. And those things are not outside you. They are on the inside of you. I'm saying that the Christian is heavily loaded. He only needs a good teacher to open things up to him. He has power over sin, power over Satan, power over the world. He is able to reign in life through the eternal spirit and the eternal life that we have received. Things that accompany salvation. It is like what the Bible says in Psalm 103. I'm saying that it is like it is said but what we have is more than this. Psalm 103. From verse 1. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. All oh, my innermost beings, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul. And forget not all his benefits. See, benefits are not the real salary. They are added the things that are added to you. Niema ye kan fasodie ka ho na nya aketua ne pa ne mum e ye de e bata bata aketua no ho. Added advantage. E ye adem aketua no ho niema e foa foa ho. Not all his benefits. E ma wo re mfi ne ne ye pa na. But it starts from somewhere. Na e fra se free baby. Who forgives all your sins. Oh no no dey on form so e che o. Once your sins are forgiven and your sins. Say all your sins are forgiven. It is like what Psalm 103 is saying, and he heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things, so that your youth is renewed. Forget not all his benefits. There are benefits associated with salvation. A teacher will have to explain. Somebody will have to reason. Somebody Somebody have to open it up to so you. So that we will know that in Christ, we are not weaklings. So we can live victorious Christian life. See, the new life's the new life comes with so much hope. So much grace. And this grace that God gives us produces effects. The watching world, you see this glorious difference. That the eternal life has brought to us a changed life. See, the Nicodemus should be able to come and ask us, what is the reason for your change life? Because the new life is the eternal life it is not eternal death it is life it is life so it must produce effects so that the new life is the eternal life it is life so it must produce effects if he said da in kwano eye eye da in kwano eye owu it is life eye in kwano it must produce effect. Something on the inside. Should be able to work on the inside till it counts as on the outside. When you meet a drunkard, you don't drink on your head. You don't use the liquor to smear your face. But they drink so much. They drink into their belly. And somehow you, you can see from their face that this man is a drunkard. It is creating effects on the face. It affects the way he walks. Sometimes, when you look at his lips, nobody will tell you that this man is a drunkard. The eternal life on the inside should produce effects that the watching world should see. 
the name of the Lord. Paul said, because of me. They praise God. Because of the changed life. Nicodemus went to Jesus by Nicodemus now. He said, I know you don't come from here. Those, those of us who live here, you don't behave the way you do. Yeah, he said, yeah, wo bray. As he was saying that, oh, kasansem, no. Jesus understood him. Yes, and his answer to Nicodemus is that, nah, mwaya, yes, Nicodemus do you want, Nicodemus want say, to be born again? Say, yeah, wo what he was trying to say is this. Yeah, no, oh, chiren, say, when you get born again, say, wo, wo, fo, fra, and my life coming to you, nah, men, kwani, be, eba, wo, you will produce the same effect. Wo, ebe, nya, in, su, 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 sa, pe, and pe, greater pe. works than this, shall ye too? Nah, nye, ma, kesi, a, chen, we, impo, na, wo, because I go to the Father. If he said, and when I go, the spirit will come and indwell in me. The apostle Paul said, this, Paul say, By the grace of God, I am who I am. And, I met you, said, I met you. and his grace to me na, na, dum, na, wo, was wo, not without effect. Grace, eternal life, should produce effects. Dum, dan, kwa, ese, se, inyan, sun, sun, so, See, you can't say, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. Show it by your good works. What to me for our no keke and can send me your Christian, me your Christian, for our brabo papa etre. When news got to Peter's and the James, a bra, a mania ba, petroni, Jacobun chain, Jerusalem that Antioch have received the gospel. I will Jerusalem say Antiochia, Ajay, Assemble, they sent Barnabas, was my Barnabas to. The brethren in Antioch. When he arrived, the scripture says he saw the evidence of the grace of God. This is Acts 11, verse 23. When he arrived and saw the evidence of the grace of God. Other version says what the grace of God had done. Uh, Titus said that the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. Tito said, teaching us to say no to now, ungodliness. Or say, the grace of eternal life. That's things in our lives. There must be the evidence of eternal life as and as eternal Holy Spirit in your life. Somebody must teach him. Somebody should explain. Somebody should reason with this one. Otherwise, you'll be like the Ethiopian eunuch who will go to Jerusalem and serve and worship and still will not understand the A, B, C of the word. This is about the eternal life in us. See, the promised Holy Spirit on our lives. He is that who is the one who anoints. Onu ena osrango. When he's on your life, you are anointed. You don't need olive oil. Who uh, here olive oil? The apostle Paul says it is he who anointed us. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Jesus said the Holy Spirit is upon me. He has anointed me. And I want to say that once the Holy Spirit is upon your life. He has anointed you. The Holy Spirit is described as the Spirit of Christ. And this Spirit of Christ is in you. He, he is the power of God. He is the power that raised Jesus from the dead. He is the incomparably great power. For us who believe. He is a creator God. When he is in you, he will give you creative ideas. He gives creative ideas. The Bible calls him the comforter. The teacher and the guide. Our helper. The, the, the revealer of secrets. He, he reveals the hidden things of God. 
Paul says he is the mind of Christ. He is our strength. Our glory. Our redeemer. And the like. Isaiah 11 says this. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him. Look at how he described the spirit of the Lord. Isaiah 11 verse 2. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him. That is Jesus. But today I'm saying that he's also resting on you, the new Christian. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him. Of wisdom, <laughs> he is the spirit of wisdom. There is no space for any Christian. <laughs> you see, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot act foolishly if uh, the Holy Spirit is in your life. He's the spirit of wisdom. Oh yeah, and of understanding. The spirit of counsel and of might. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. He is in you. What manner of person are you? Living a victorious Christian life. His presence in, in us his presence in us is God visiting you. <laughs> that is a prophecy concerning when he was born. God has visited you. And he comes into your life with gifts and graces. You see, when God visits you, you never just come empty handed. So the Holy Spirit never came into your life empty handed, not at all. The scripture says now to each of us. The manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the spirit a message of wisdom another a message of knowledge to another faith and the like so he comes into our life with giftings and graces. Oh, to make us strong and to equip us to reign in life. Leave above reproach. Catch, uh, catch spirits by the discerning power that you have. In the name of Jesus. May the Lord quicken himself in your life. May the Lord do that. He has brought in us graces and giftings. This is how much the Christian is loaded. Beyond everything else. I didn't know it, you know. He is the Holy Spirit. Oh no, any home from Kong Kong. There could be mighty men. And mighty gods. That is why the Bible is careful to describe him as the Almighty. Because the Bible is saying that there could be mighty people. But when it comes to him, he's the Almighty. But when it comes to holiness, there is none other. I challenge me, I challenge you to show me anyone that you know, any God. That is a holy God. My interest in the teaching this evening is that the, the eternal life and the promised eternal Holy Spirit in our lives will cause us to live above reproach. And he said, 
any da hum hum na eti yemu nu obe boya ma ya bo abra bo a efi any dem any hum in this perverse world ebo via si ya aproi the holy spirit in your life oh hum kun kwa owa abra bo mu nu and this or should I should say this holy life which is introduced into your life and now she said mami kani se abra bo kun kwa wadi abba abra bo mu nu the sin nature immediately fights it. It is like antibodies fighting a strange agent introduced into the body. So, struggle ensues once the Holy Spirit comes into your life. Galatians 5 15. See, the Bible says this. And uh, this was to some believers in Galatia. 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 Galatians 5 from verse 15. Galatia. 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 Now, this is to, to, do a, do to a Christian church. We are ma, Christopher, sorry. And I want to ask you why is all these things happening in a Christian church? If you bite and devour each other, watch out or you will be you will be you will be destroyed by each other. Now in the church, they are biting and devouring one another. And then the apostle Paul says that this thing should not be. Why are they full of the why is the spirit in them? Why do they have eternal life yet they are biting and devouring one another? Somebody will have to teach them the meaning of Christ in their lives. So the apostle Paul comes around. And was for Paul Eba. Verse 16. So I say, so I say, walk by the spirit. And you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit. And the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. Now, once the Holy Spirit is introduced into your life, the same nature battles it. But you see, the Bible says, if anyone is in Christ. He is a new creation. Now I bear a body for The old is gone. The new has come. So once the Holy Spirit is introduced in your life, the old must give way. The new should reign. So the conflict starts. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit. And the spirit, what is contrary to the flesh, they are in conflict with each other. So that you, the new, the believer, are not able to do what you want. But, but if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious. <laughs> Sexual immorality. <laughs> now, when you don't allow the spirit to overrule the sin nature, <laughs> you can be a Christian, but you'll be committing sexual immorality. <laughs> Impurity and debauchery. Adultery, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions can be in churches, envy and drunkenness. Orges, Agubone, and the like. I warn you as I did before. That those, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But he was talking to Christians. They are living below the standard. They are living under the authority of sin. Meanwhile, the eternal life and the eternal Holy Spirit is given to them to equip them to live above reproach. Now, 
And the Apostle Paul continues. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self control. Against such things, there is no law. And now listen to 24. Those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passion and desire. The brethren in Galatia they did not know that they are more than conquerors and that anyone who belongs to Christ should crucify the flesh so that they don't become Christian adulterers they have crucified the passion and the desire of the flesh this is the teaching of the apostle Paul. But please lift up your head and look at me. Crucifixion does not necessarily mean death. The apostle Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Yet he said, Nevertheless, I live. And so I say, and so, when you are crucified, it doesn't necessarily mean death. You see, these two people were crucified on, on the cross together with Christ. They were crucified. But you see, when the, when the soldiers went, they found them still alive. What, what would have happened if they say the soldier decided to untie them and bring them back home? Would they have died? It's what you did. Said then the basic. So I start from the coin that we you want free Diana so and I would want be fear and I would be woo. So when you are crucified with Christ, it is a when you will both Christo ascend your mind. Doesn't mean you lose your desires and feelings. I know in church say what corner there any what think a beira, but in your mind. Now, so what do you know? Tell yourself that I have signed the death certificate of this feeling. So I shouldn't obey its desires. That is what it means by to be crucified with Christ. But if you leave the body crucified on the cross for a long time, the body will die. So we are saying that crucifixion does not mean lost of feelings. Lost, lost of desires. But you see, that person's overriding passion is Christ. He never allowed anything to divert his his side from Christ. Other things have no growing fascination for him. See, the Apostle Paul explained it when he was teaching the Romans. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. I'll take verse 6, 11 there. For we know that our old self was crucified with him. So that the body, so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with. That we should no longer be slaves to sin. In the same way, that is verse 11. Count yourself dead to sin. So to be crucified with Christ is to get count yourself dead to sin. But alive to God in Christ Jesus. Then he said, therefore, 
Once you count yourself as dead to sin and crucified with Christ, do not let sin reign in your mortal body. Do not let. So it depends on you. Sin reign in your mortal body. So that you you obey its evil desires. Do not offer any part of yourself. Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness. But rather, offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought, who have been brought from death to life and offer every part of yourself to him as instruments of righteousness for sin shall no longer be your master because you are not under the law of sin but under grace crucifixion does not necessarily mean death but when you deny the crucified body life for a long time, the crucified body will die. The apostle Paul then sums it up. It like was Paul, a bonnet of us. No, I, I strike a blow to my body. And yeah, me, me shape me when I'm so and make it my slave so that after i have preached to others i myself will not be disqualified for this prize i bring my body under subjection i have desires i have feelings i have my own opinion but i have crucified the same nature and so my body so I bring it under subjection so that Christ will rule in my life not the sin nature See, now, let's go to the Old Testament and examine three lives some three righteous people then we bring this ministry to a close Ezekiel 14 Odifo Ezekiel woman it do nine verse 13 and 14 In chemu do me sir any do nine son of man oni papa if a country sins against me by being unfaithful say o man be any me no cry na wey boni ti ame a and i search out my and i and i stretch out my hand against it na metene me sir eti a won a to cut off its food supply and send famine upon it and kill its people and their animals even if these three men now listen to their names i didn't write this bible but i i envy these three men uh-huh. If they were to write again, I would have wished that they added my name. <laughs> so that they would say these four men. Even if these three men. Now, Noah. Noah. Daniel. Daniel. Job. Hill, were in it. They could save only themselves. One day, will be to me. By their right by their righteousness one number one train so declares the sovereign law which that era did in three people if you like examine their lives opa sign if i'm in some people my brother you have to take david so open so for david yeah Bathsheba will come into your mind. If you don't like Bathsheba, Uriah will come. If you take Abraham, straight away Hagar will come. If you take Moses, the crashing of the law 
and his anger will come. Only the nebufo any onyango pon semwa or country form eno ebe bawa jiri. He will say, tell people don't marry anybody outside Israel. He himself will go and marry. Oh mercy! Who catch him close for Israel? Man say, mama wari mfi amama mufo. Na wo wa kwako wari efri amama. But check this three men. Na mumi yewe sani pa mi insane. Noah. Noah. Daniel. Daniel. Job. Hio. The Bible says they are righteousness. Chironi say one train eh will save themselves when there's an evil in the land and they want to plead as their righteousness will save them but they will not even save the others what kind of life did they live in the midst of their perverse generation i will take daniel and job Mefa Daniel any hero and I'll summarize it with Noah. Na me di Noah abone tofa. Daniel 1 verse 8. Daniel woman no eti ba ko nche mu wase. It's a very popular test. Eh ye test ya obi a eni. But Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine. Na Daniel si na dwin pise, on fa o hene duane engu ni hufi. And he asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself this way now osre opia for hene no say oma ne kwan na wangu ni hufi now two things are involved here nemba mienu ene waha food edwan and the law of god ene onyame mra but daniel resolved now daniel boni trimpo he resolved oboni trimpo not to defile himself say on on gu ni hufi with the king's food on fa o hene edwan ni gu ni hufi certainly the king's food will be more appetizing than the leaves he was asking for but he has resolved this one Ravi Sagaris will say that in the devil's corridor on the do, in the devil's corridors you may not even know draw the lines of resistance tell yourself for the sake of Christ, there are certain things I would not do. And discipline your appetite. More money and much money. Even money that does not belong to you. Humanizing. Following of men. See, you are a Christian, you can do that because you have not disciplined your appetite now let's look at job job 27 verse 3 job 27 verse 3 now, this, is, this is job as long as I have life within me, the breath of God in my nostrils, my lips will not say any wicked, anything wicked, and my tongue will not utter lies. Now, look, at, look at that man. I want you to know why God is calling these people righteous. They have feelings. They have crucified their body. They are doing all this for the sake of God. In the midst of perverse world. As long as I have life within me. And the breath of God in my nostrils. My lips will not say anything wicked. And my tongue will not utter lies. He has drawn a line of resistance. I will not cross this one. Look at Job 31 1. Very popular verse. I made a covenant with my eyes not to look lustfully at a woman. He disciplined his appetites. Hmm. He disciplined his appetites. So this evening I want to encourage you. For the sake of Christ, Christ and the glorious church, draw lines of resistance. 
any pampim and discipline your appetite na she wa kono so eternal life in you dan kwa na e wo mu the promise holy spirit any who who more dey ashe em bo no has equipped you to be able to do that asha wo den aboa o esiesi o say obetumi ayesa yours is to have them that mind of christ na wo de ne say say wonya sa adwen no christ adwen follow these righteous men na disa ahoti fo yechi let job mahio daniel Daniel and Noah. Any Noah speak to you. Anyone kasa. Now once you block the sinful nature. It is a who see ni pasu no kwaya. Then the new life and your encounter from will work itself to every fabric of your life. And on what be your juma for a bra bwa who do in them consciously and unconsciously. Yeah, wahunim nim na de weni naso. So your whole being is changed and transformed. We ni pasu ni na besakra. I'm saying that block the sin nature. They make a ni say si hunam and sunu kwa and give the eternal life space. Namma. Uh, 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 by the help of the Holy Spirit to work its life into every part of your being. The Bible said the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is like yeast. That a woman took and missed in, into about 60 pounds of flour. Ah, or the or a bar no a fire no the fra is some until it worked all through the door. Now moka no f bomb more than ye do my spirit you have received. When you give him space, so woman acquire will work yourself in your life. On what be ye do my brother until the life of Christ. Copim say yes soon a brother seen in your very body. Oh, be who will nip it. We can live above reproach. You bet me up a bra a fee and a kaye. Such kind of life. Sabra boy, he no longer looks at things in the same way. And shed near much he said, and not a shiny canano. His desires are new and the old has lost its power of attraction. Now, Kono de Assassin. His values have changed. He doesn't walk any longer as the Gentiles would do. Brothers and sisters in the Lord. The new creation can live a victorious life. In the midst of a corrupt world. It can shine like stars in the darkness. So let us endeavor by the help of the Holy Spirit. Draw lines of resistance. Let us discipline our appetite. Let us serve God. Like the Daniels. Like the Noahs. Like the Job. Listen to what the Bible concludes summarizes concerning them we na tro no ebo ne tofa fa in the land of us wo us asase so they leave the man whose name was job na oberu me bi tena ho a wo fere ni hiob this man was blameless sa oberu me no odimu and upright na otene he feared god na osro nyame and shun evil na otwe ne ho fri bone ho noah Noah. This is the account of Noah. And his family. Noah was a righteous man. Blameless among the people of his time. And he walked faithfully with God. This is about Daniel. At this that the administrators and the satra tried to find grounds for charges against Daniel. In his conduct of government affairs. But listen to this. This is a man born of a woman. The Bible says, they, but they were unable to do so. They could find no corruption in him. Because he was trustworthy. Neither corrupt. Nor negligent. Let Noah. Noah. Job. And Daniel. Any Daniel. Challenge you tonight. God bless us.